What is good? We're back. And we got JB and Mitch from the Dynasty Theory. We got the FF Theory back in the house. How we doing, boys? JB? What's up, Case? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to, to run through this mock here. And, you know, I got some issues, probably all of which are Mitch's picks, but <laughs> I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah. All right. Mitch, how you doing, bud? Good to see you. Been a minute. Good. Yeah. No, it's awesome to be back on you. Dude, mock drafts are fun this year because I think there's just so many players that you could buy into in the second and third rounds that compared to last year, last year I kind of hated the third and fourth rounds, but now I'm finding guys that I could like. You know, that'll probably change when the NFL draft happens. But as of right now, there's a whole list of guys that I'm cool drafted there. Oh, yeah. it's it's We've been over this a few times, but, you know, 3-1 to 3-8, it seems like 3-9 even sometimes, depending on who shakes out where it's, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of fun here, but we're on the precipice of the NFL draft, so we want to do one final uh, mock draft, and who better to do it with than our friends over at Dynasty Theory. Uh, so before we get started... I got a lot of problems with you people! And we'll, we'll see where JB falls in that, uh, in that circle. Um, so right off the rip, we'll do kind of six at a time. We got four rounds, super flex, tight end premium, uh, mock draft 1.5, so... Uh, and we'll, we'll kind of get some landing spots in here. We'll kind of talk about how the NFL draft might shift some of, of your views and opinions, how it can get you in or out on guys, risers, fallers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but right off the rip, we have uh, Caleb Williams. That was the Bauer Club, your boy, JB. We got Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake May at 1-3, Jaden Daniels at 1-4, Malik Neighbors at 1-5, and Roma Dunze at 1-6. So uh, JB at 1-1. One, one, and we've it's kind of been something that's, We've talked about a lot on this show. Is it pretty much always Caleb? And then as far as the next two quarterbacks go, is Malik Neighbors ever, or I guess you, you know, is Malik Neighbors ahead of those two quarterbacks for you guys or anybody else? Or is it always the two kind of quarterbacks after Marvin Harrison? I'll give it JB and then, and then Mitch. Yeah. Whenever you created the mock draft to jump in on sleeper, I think Mitch joined and then I joined immediately after and I saw the 101 was available, and I was like, I, I want the easy way out to start the show. I, give me Caleb Williams. And like, I when I f- jumped on with with you, Case, I mean, a couple months ago, I, I talked about Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison being in a tier together. And I mean, even by the end of that episode, I think I, in my head, I was like, okay, I'm, there's going to be separation for me. Mm-hmm. And now with Caleb Williams, you know, going to Chicago, presumably they, they move away from Justin Fields. They, they bring Keenan Allen, then Keenan Allen in there's weapons around him. This is a very good situation. So for me with, with the talent that, that Caleb Williams brings into the league, the, the pedigree, the, the profile, and then what Chicago is hopefully doing to build around him. He's the one Oh one for me, just absolutely locked and loaded. And the question about Malik Neighbors, I have no issue with Malik Neighbors, and this is going to upset Mitch. I have no issue with Malik <laughs> Neighbors over Drake May, just without a doubt. Without like, a doubt. Mm. Well, no, 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 no. Let me, let me. No, 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 I heard it. You heard yeah, it too, right? Case? I'm, yep. I'm yeah. backtracking early today, guys. Uh, hedge. The, <laughs> yeah, hedge. I, I have no issue with Malik Neighbors going ahead of Drake May. I have them tiered together. If I don't need the quarterback, the profile of Malik Neighbors is something I feel a little bit more comfortable with. But for me, Jaden Daniels is the locked in number two right now because it, forget about landing spot. I think he offers enough with his legs that he's going to give you that floor and that ceiling. So for me, if we're looking at the quarterbacks, it's going Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and then Drake May in that in that third tier and that's when I start to look at like a Malik neighbors. But if, if, if you were just drafting all the spots or rankings wise, it would be Caleb Marvin Harrison, then the two quarterbacks, then neighbors, or do you have neighbors? Yeah, I I would go Caleb Marvin Jaden. And then depending on the tight end premium, you can throw Brock Bowers Ooh, in the next right. year, but, but, in the, but I have Drake may Malik neighbors, Roma Dunze and Brock Bowers in that tier together if we're looking at two PPR for tight ends. All right, Mitch is Mitch is he's licking his chops here. What do what do we Ready to roll? 
<laughs> Honestly, I think John's take is the vast majority of Dynasty players' takes right now is Drake May is the third guy and they're willing to let him fall to the 105 mm-hmm. or 106. But my issue with it is, is everyone brings up like, hey, Jaden Daniel has this awesome rushing floor. Sure. So does Drake May. Mm. Acting like Drake May doesn't have a rushing floor just tells me that like you didn't really watch a whole bunch of Drake May because his rushing floor is really, really good. And his arm's good. And I understand that he has... He tried to play hero ball way too much in that system yeah. last year. He just flat out did. and But everything you see, he has... I think he has the highest ceiling of any quarterback in this class. I no, think come his, on. Come on what? <laughs> Jay sorry, Daniels, sorry. I, I, sure I know, like I'm it's sorry. been 30 minutes. You haven't talked yet, but, um, <laughs> but like really though, like he has the arm, he has the build, he has everything that you want as a quarterback. If he could clean up those mistakes and that's the big if for him, I really truly believe that if Caleb Williams wasn't in this draft, Drake may would be the locked in one one already. And we wouldn't really be talking about who, who the next quarterback's going to be, because I think Drake May would be going that high in that scenario. Yeah. So for for, for you, Mitch, if mm-hmm. we're if we're kind of ranking those top six, seven guys, how, how does that fall for you? So for me, it's Caleb Williams. And even if like Buffalo somehow traded up and got Marvin Harrison, so, you know, Marvin Harrison gets that absolute smash mm-hmm. landing spot, it would still be Caleb Williams 101 for me. Then Harrison, then May, then probably neighbors, Daniels, Adunze, and Brock Bowers is usually seventh or eighth for me. Yeah, that's that's about where I'm at. I'm I'm going Caleb, Marvin, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Neighbors, Adunze, Bowers. Yep. Yep. I'm uh, same there. I'm not saying, and I, I I bit my tongue long enough. <laughs> I'm not saying Drake May doesn't offer rushing upside. He's a very mobile quarterback, but from a rushing perspective. You can't sit here and say that he and Jaden Daniels are on the same uh, tier in terms of the rushing upside. Daniels has higher rushing upside, but he doesn't have the same passing upside that May has. So has I, more, I would say uh, Daniels he has more passing da- upside. He does more not. mistakes and inconsistencies, but also a lot, a lot more games, a lot older of a player. Which you know, I don't, I don't. You're, I mean, JB's frozen up in the corner there, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much your analytical brain weighs into that, but I mean, you have multiple years of of Jaden Daniels, um, and then you only have really like there there wasn't a whole lot around Drake May this year. You, you saw quite a, a drop off in performance, and I think some of that has to be equated. I mean, Jaden Daniels, nobody gave a shit about Jaden Daniels when, and and there was a point where he did have some good guys around him. We just didn't even know it uh, because he wasn't necessarily elevating their play per se. Uh, I would say maybe. A good way to put it, maybe you don't agree. Jaden Daniels, more athleticism to his running style than what Drake May, but Drake May maybe offers a little bit more of that kind of Josh Allen like running style. They're just different stylistically uh, players. But I, 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 actually, I agree with Mitch here. I much prefer Drake May to Jaden Daniels as far as playing the position of quarterback and what could be. Um, and I and I, and I like Jaden. I got them both in the same area, and I had Jaden Daniels because of the legs thing to start off with. But I, I agree that that you get a big bodied guy, and that's I think that's the thing that worries me a little bit. I know Jaden Daniels didn't miss much time, but you know, little little bit of reckless abandon of kind of how he goes about using his athleticism. Drake not quite as worried about him using the legs a little bit so all right jb you look you look flustered i'll give you the, the last word and then and then last we'll move word. on <laughs> listen i'm i'm italian i need to get that last word in uh tweet from field yates yesterday Jaden daniels went blitz in 2023 69 of 97 71.1 percent 1072 yards 17 touchdowns no interceptions that that's when blitzed he he gives you the the ability to extend plays. I'm not saying Drake may can't, but one of the big knocks on Drake may is that he's inconsistent. Okay. So we can sit there and point to the, the caliber of receivers that Jaden Daniels had. But again, Mitch, we've talked about this. How many times you could say the same thing about Joe Burrow going into his last season. All right. And I'm not saying they're the same prospect as I like to, to clarify. Um, 
but Jaden Daniels, like even for quarterbacks at, at the age of 23, if he's getting that top five draft capital, I'm okay with that. Like, like it's not like the running back position where you start to look at the age of 23 and you're like, Oh man, I'm a little hesitant at quarterback. Like he continued to grow each and every season. So I'm willing to bet on him. How do we feel about Jaden Daniels pressure to sack ratio who the kids are loving these days being historically yeah, bad at 24%. Oh, oh, he's throwing up the jazz hands. He doesn't I, like it. I'm glad he put the pen down. I was a little worried there for a second that it was going to go through the monitor. All my last take on this is Jaden Daniels. He's fine. Right. And it's not, I mean, we're saying the one Oh three against the one Oh four and Oh, yeah. up in an yeah. uproar. I really do believe that if you put Drake may, on that LSU team, I think he would have had just as good of stats as Jaden Daniels had. And I think if Jaden Daniels was on North Carolina, I think his stats would have been just as good as Drake Mace. Like, I, where they were is just how it would end up. But, I mean, if Daniels came out after his third year, how would we view him, right? How good would Drake May be if he just transferred to LSU this year and got to play for LSU for the next two years? I think he'd be looking pretty darn good, too. So, and they're both, I think these three guys are going to be locked in top 15 starters in the league. Yeah. Okay. I like Drake May more, and I'm really hoping Daniels goes to the commanders. So then I don't even have to like him, anyways. <laughs> I, I, uh, you, uh, go ahead, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go no. ahead. And then I'm, then I'll, I'll move along. <laughs> so if, if Drake May lands with New England, mm -hmm. you're still going to prefer him over Daniel, da J Daniel. Daniel Jane Daniel Daniels, no matter Daniel Daniels, uh, no matter where he goes. Well, that would mean Daniels will go to the commanders. But, you yes. know, I, yeah, I don't really care. Um, Caleb's the one to one because that landing dig, spot is dig so good. those dig those heels in to just keep digging them in. Drake Bay's just the better talent, man. You can't hate me yeah. that much for it. OK, yeah, I, I don't think I really have a, a I mean, I know, you know, New England historically hasn't been a great neither has. Washington, but I feel <laughs> like, like we, Washington produces quarterback talent, right? Yeah, I feel like we've been talking about this a little bit, but like I feel like you kind of have to like wipe the slate clean on both of what the historical things were because we have a, 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 to a totally new from top to bottom kind of, you know, GM to uh, head coach to, you know, philosophy i think for both of those teams which i find you know pretty interesting so yeah you know we like to historically say oh we hate those but like i don't know May mayo seems to be saying all the right things opposite to what bill would his philosophy would be of like hey we need to make we need to get playmakers on offense and uh you know i obviously I, i'm a niners guy so i like the fact that they brought in a niners guy in 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 washington and and They've to be, you know, frank, they've had a lot of success people going from that franchise to other places around the league fairly quickly. So you got to kind of like uh, what, what's going on, I think, in, in both of those situations. All right, let's uh, let's let's keep it moving. We got one seven Brock Bowers, J.J. McCarthy, one eight. Can't wait for that conversation. Uh, Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, Michael Penix and Troy Franklin rounding out the top of the first round at one twelve. So. Uh, Bowers, I, I don't really feel too much of a need to, to discuss much there. Uh, take him where you will. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I like him. He's good. Fun player. Yada, yada, yada. All right. J.J. McCarthy at the 1-8. I'm, I'm not a huge J.J. McCarthy guy. I'm not a hater by any means. I think, I think it's gotten a little too out of control for me. But, I mean, I think, is this... Mitch, the pick for you because of it's super flex and it's the quarterback and he's probably getting good draft capital or is it more than that? No, that, <clears throat> that's exactly. I think there are seven like elite prospects in this draft. Mix them up however you want. It's fine. It's not a big deal. But after that, it's like, unless I it's Daniels love, over May. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And, but like, I don't love the wide. There's. Like, I like Brian Thomas, right? But mm -hmm. I don't love him. He's not like a sure. guy that I'm going to buy into no matter where he lands. But J.J. McCarthy, it's looking like he's either going to go to Denver or he's going to go to Minnesota more than likely. Two who I believe good landing spots with good coaching and coaches that I believe will do what's best to help him succeed because I think they're both really good head coaches, right? And so I just think the landing spot is the reason why I'll buy into it because – Sean Payne isn't going anywhere. 
I can't remember the Vikings head coach. It's slipping me right now, but he's a great coach, right? I mean, he's out there winning with Josh Dobbs last year after a week, coaching him through the game when he didn't know the playbook. I think McCarthy, maybe he needs to sit for a little while. We say that all the time. What Mm -hmm. do we know? I really think that as the, I look at the rest of this draft, every single person that was picked, I think they all have blemishes. But McCarthy can at least gain value from where he is pretty quickly from that 108. If he has a decent season, then all of a sudden he's quarterback 15 in Dynasty. And then you're set for a few seasons because, you know, John and I talk about it a lot on Dynasty Theory is like that 25 draft class is terrible. Like right now, I like J.G. McCarthy than anyone in that draft class as far as quarterbacks go. Yeah. I got to give Shador some love. But yeah. Right. I mean, he's there. but. Yeah, but he's only allowed to go and play for five or six teams. <laughs> only when it's warm outside. So that's yeah. very important. Yeah. How about you, JB? What's your feelings on McCarthy and and you know if the or Mitch if the Giants take a trade up for McCarthy? Uh, I'll I'll change my mind if yeah, he goes I, the oh, Giants. Okay. Yeah, I'm more than happy to be like you know someone else can take him at the 108. <laughs> Brian Thomas not looking terrible in Jacksonville. You know. Exactly. <laughs> yep. But uh, JB for, for me, it's a tier of two right here. So I, I really have no issue with JJ McCarthy at 108 whatsoever. It's JJ McCarthy and Brian Thomas. For me, I think there is going to be enough upside when looking at Brian Thomas. There's a lot of things about his profile to like, but more so and Mitch hit the nail on the head. It has to do more with the guys that you're looking at from 110 and on. I think there are, more concerns when you look at their profiles and expectations here in the NFL than when you look at McCarthy, who, yes, the volume was low in Michigan. He really didn't need to do all that much. But if he goes top 10 in the NFL draft, you know, the the QB evaluations, they can always be funky. And at this point, one week out, we don't know how much of it is smoke. I mean, last year, if you remember, there was all this stuff about, oh, Will Levis might be going 101 mm-hmm. overall, like first yeah. first pick in the NFL draft. And then we obviously see how the NFL views it. So with J.J. McCarthy, we're going to have a lot of information in a week's time here. And at 108, I have no issue with McCarthy. And if, if Mitch would have gone Brian Thomas, I really would have had no issue with that either. So, so that's your two-man... Mm-hmm. Uh, NBA Jam team there. Those those. That's guys. my 108 and 109. And like Mitch said, there's a top seven. The only thing that I could see really shaking that up, if you're in a, a league where maybe there's no tight end premium. Yeah. So obviously Brock's impacted. Or if, like, let's say the Vikings would trade up and get J.J. McCarthy. I think that might be enough to swing it for some people to maybe put him ahead of a Dunze. Would that? Oh, okay. Uh, like I, I, I just I think that's a very real possibility. I'm a big Dunze guy, so I don't, know, I don't think. Same. That's- <laughs> I, I, I love Rome. I, sound like it. I, I, uh, I, I said in in the public's eye, I think that could happen. I yeah. Think okay. That's fair enough. From an overall value. What okay? if? What if? Don't get on my bad side of that case. <laughs> what if? What if Penix or Knicks? Go to the Vikings. Does that raise the the tide there and give you a bigger one eight to one ten now? Or I I would throw one of those guys in at one ten strictly because of the positional scarcity, the assumption that they're gonna have a somewhat longer leash than what we see with guys like Sam Howell, Desmond Ritter, the later round quarterbacks that yeah, they get a starting job, but there's really nothing invested in them. I, I, Bo Nix and Michael Penix are so fascinating to me because, and, and I had a patron ask, uh, I think it was this morning or yesterday, uh, about my, my current ranking of, of Bo Nix and Michael Penix. And I was honest, I was like, I honestly don't have all that much conviction on either of them right now. And I've switched and flipped and flopped mm-hmm. so many times because you see positive reports from an NFL perspective. Hey, these guys love Michael Penix or, hey, there's some there's some nice reports of Bo Nix. And then you see that a lot of people uh, don't have Michael Penix for the first round grade. Like it's 
those two are going to be settled in once we get the draft capital right. landing spot. Not so critical for those two, in my opinion, just because of the question marks surrounding this one ten and, and on. But if one of them land in the first round, yeah. I, I think okay I think one of them is ending up in the first round. I don't know which I one. I like Penix, but you know I I don't know which one. But I I think I just feels like that gauntlet of Broncos, Saints, Seahawks, Vikings. So I feel like one of those guys. Have, and if the Vikings even for some reason don't do anything, like they have another pick back at the back half of that thing where they could they could mm-hmm. do something. So. I feel like one of those guys are going to go in there and, and solidify one more quarterback in the first round where that would be not 100% sure for me if Penix was to the Vikings that would that would put him solely in the you know I I'd put him right next to McCarthy. Uh, I would actually take him over McCarthy cuz I like him more than McCarthy. I was just going to say you mentioned Seattle in there and with their OC being a Washington guy right. the if they were to like let's say Michael Penix slips and Seattle passed on him once, maybe twice, whatever the case may be. It was like, okay, that really says a lot about how the NFL views Michael Penix. Yeah. Something that might not even come into play at all, but I, I just thought it was sure. an interesting it, it, way to I, look I at it. That thought's crossed my mind. It's also, you have a first-year guy who, I don't know how much pull he can he can have of, say, like if the, if the I don't know who the GM there is currently. Um, I, I don't follow the Seahawks. Like I'm drawing a blank right now, but new head coach. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how, you know, how much it's pull the new OC would have in saying, Hey, we got to take this guy in the first round. They kind of need a quarterback. It would seem so, um, I think it fits, but uh, yeah, I, I could go either way on that one. Um, how about general manager, John Schneider, John Schneider. I, I, I didn't know if he was still the general manager with Pete Carroll leaving. So, um, there, there he is. So Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin, Lad McConkey, A.D. Mitchell, any of those landing spot guys get up into that 8, 9, 10 tier stronger for you? No? 10 maybe? I mean, someone's going to have to go at 10 is the issue, right? So probably whatever landing spot I like the most as far as where they go. The problem is like Troy Franklin, like – I like him, but he has so many holes. The dude mm-hmm. just gets blown over by wind. <laughs> Mitchell was good for like a year. McConkey's great, but he has injuries. And it, like, there's just so many things you could talk bad about these guys. And like, just going back to that Penix conversation real quick. The one thing that I always think about with him is we get into like these weird hive mind discussions, right? What, how high would he go in this year's draft? If somehow Washington played just as good as they get again, against Texas, Texas? but Texas won that game. And we don't see the Michigan tape. I think he's 104, 105. 100%. Before that that game happened, he was. Yeah, and and then like he has that one bad game, which really wasn't his fault. The (laughs) offensive line crumbled in front of him. Yeah, he had issues, but... Michigan dumped, dumped, dump trucked everybody. Like, that's what they did. Exactly. And so like just... If Penix does get that good landing spot, I don't know how you don't raise him up. Besides, yeah. if you're just like, oh, no, he was bad against the best team in the yeah. nation last year. So yeah. there you go. They got nine guys they can rotate on the defensive yeah. front. And, you know, nobody scored. That's but why yeah, J.J. McCarthy didn't question. have to throw. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back to your question. I think the biggest riser is probably going to be if one of the running backs end up with the Cowboys. And then it's going to be, okay, there's your 110, 111. Okay, so you you think, which would pro- presumably be Brooks or Benson, most likely. Brooks, Benson. Yeah, whoever. Could be Cora, I mean, my guess. If it ended up being Jalen Wright, it probably yeah. could bust, burst him up that high. Bust yeah. him, burst him, you know, everything. I would I would tend to. I think by the time we're doing this, uh, actual really pulling the trigger on these guys, I think one of those running backs will be floating 111, 112 in a lot of drafts, if not both of them. Because I think both of them are going to end up going in the second round. Um, and... You know, there's a couple of fun teams. Obviously, the Cowboys are one of them. I I really like Xavier Worthy. I I kind of like Xavier Worthy more than Brian Thomas. Um, Brian Thomas, I like him a lot. I put I put put those guys in the same tier for me. Yeah. I actually have Lad McConkey up in that tier as well. Um, because I think it's like you said, like the how good's your good. I like Lad's good quite a bit. I like what he does, and I like what's kind of being spun as some landings. Like if he gets to the Chiefs in the back half of this thing or, or, you know, the bills probably need a different type of receiver than him. 
But if he goes, like, I think the Bills landing spot's going to, if it's A.D. Mitchell, which seems to make some sense, could that bring him up to the 110 area, or is that still not quite doing it for you? For me right now, I have a, a tier of, like, four or five guys starting at that 110. Mm-hmm. So conceivably, yes, there are spots that could propel, uh, you know, I took a Donnie Mitchell at a 201 mm-hmm. that could easily put him up at 110. As things stand today, you know, because of the types of profiles and some of the question marks overall, not just with Mitchell, but everybody in that everybody, tier. Everybody, right. If it were me in this spot in an actual draft, I would love to do something. I mean, uh, make a move to trade back at future draft capital as well. Make a move to trade back and get a veteran producer or maybe get a pair of seconds for something like if somebody wants to move up, they really love somebody that's there at the 201. I would rather get two shots uh, with all these different types of profiles than maybe just take the one that that I'd be looking at here. So like it just gets so iffy and questionable. And I can't remember a draft where there's so many different running backs, wide receivers just clumped together after a certain tier that landing spot and draft capital, it's going to dictate a lot of movement post draft. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Brian Thomas, I I don't, I don't think I really care all that much where he lands. I I'm not, I want to be like head over heels all in, but I think there's enough there to be like, you know, I'm not, I'm not being guaranteed. I'm not guaranteeing it like JB's guaranteeing things, but you know, um, I, I like him. I like the profile. And if, you know, Xavier Worthy, I think is going to be a first rounder. Um, and, if, you know, is it going to be Dallas? I, you know, I don't, that seems, is, is there a, is there a landing spot you like for a guy like Xavier Worthy in this, in this, in the first round? Real quick. The only thing that I'm really worried about, this is me as a Lions fan watching Jared Goff with Jamison Williams, right? Mm-hmm. Jared Goff is a good quarterback. He's horrible at throwing the deep ball. Mm. He's very conservative and doesn't like throwing the deep ball. So, I mean, if Worthy ends up going to a quarterback, like like if he goes with Carr, right? Mm. I'm just not going to love it because yeah. I'm afraid of that combination. But if you put him with a guy who's willing to sling it, like it's not going to happen. S- say somehow he ends up on the Chargers, right? It's not mm. going to happen. It would have to be in the second round. But I would love that with Herbert. I would love Herbert being willing just to open up a little bit and being willing to throw it deep. But that one, it's really like quarterback centric to me just because that Jared Goff, Jamison Williams thing has me scarred because I think they're both really good talents, but they just don't mesh well at all on the NFL field. My worry more so with Xavier Worthy is like, I I was with you, Casey. I, I thought Xavier Worthy, he's locked and loaded first round NFL draft pick. I, I'm just getting like this really uneasy feeling in my stomach. Maybe it's something I ate for dinner earlier tonight, <laughs> but Xavier worthy, like could he slip a little bit? That's my concern. Yeah. Um, like I, again, like this is just me. May, maybe it's the crippling anxiety, just constantly thinking about stuff. And hopefully it's a situation that we don't have to see play out. Uh, if Xavier worthy does get like uh he lands in the top 25, top 26 or so, uh, that that might make that 110 pick a lot easier for me mm-hmm. if I were forced to stay with it. Yeah. Um, but my worry is that he does slip in the NFL draft. Yeah, I mean, I, the circle lines came out, and A.D. Mitchell was at like 17 and a half. That was a lot higher than I expected him to be at. So that was a little like, hmm, you know, hmm, interesting. Interesting there. It seemed like he was, he was a more the borderline first rounder for me. And I thought it seemed like the NFL, but then the circle line, those guys know, you know, more than I know. So that's it. That's certainly interesting. And Worthy was kind of, you know, pushed down to the back half of that mm-hmm. first. So interesting for mm-hmm. sure. And uh, like Worthy, he checks so many boxes, like from an analytical perspective, like and then Adonai Mitchell, you know, sticking with teammates there. There are a lot of things that he leaves to be desired, like uh, maximum receiving yards per team pass attempt. That's a little bit lower for Adonai Mitchell, like just over Mm -hmm. 1.7. Xavier Worthy early declare, uh, Adonai Mitchell early declare as well, but receiving yard market share, reception market share, those are things that all favor Xavier Worthy, but 
I, I don't want to say the three letters that are creeping in the back of people's minds with guys like Xavier Worthy and Troy Franklin because Mitch might throw something at me, but maybe BMI comes into play. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just asking the question. I'm just asking the mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking the questions. Uh, you know, outside of Devontae Smith, who has really shown that high end production. I mean, we we just got Tank Dell. He did get injured, but I mean, we got Tank Dell of of being pretty high end per day. He was like at 18 points per game at, at you know, one point in the, uh, in the season there of being, you know, on the smaller side of things. Yeah. I think it's what you're looking for. Like Marquise Brown. I think Marquise Brown is a pretty yeah. decent comp for what Xavier worthy can be and having Marquise Brown's career so far, that would be great. If you take a guy at the one eleven, one twelve. like mm -hmm. I'm good with that. You, you would love that. You would love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm big Hollywood. All right, let's keep it moving here. Let's go. Uh, 2-1, we got A.D. Mitchell, that was the Bauer Club. We got Lad McConkey at 2-2. We got Bo Nix at 2-3. We got uh, Jonathan Brooks, 2-4. Trey Benson, 2-5. And Keon Coleman at 2-6. We've talked, touched a little on A.D. Mitchell there. JB, what was the what was the thought process there? Just best available? Uh, be, you you hit the nail on the head with that. What What's the line? 17 and a half in the NFL mm -hmm. draft? Mm -hmm. I, I think, yes, there are holes in his profile. And you know, still gives you a high ceiling. But the thing that I feel most comfortable with at this point in time is that I, I strongly believe he goes in the top 20 picks in the NFL draft. You know, I, I think he's going to get that draft capital. I think he's going to get the landing spot that, that people would be interested in. The post-NFL draft, there's a very good chance I'm taking one of the running backs over him. Yeah, And there's no issue with that. But I was looking at this like we've done on Dynasty Theory and in, in, in the Patreon and the Discord. I'm looking at this as if we're in an actual rookie draft mm -hmm. and I have to make that pick today. That's why I went to Donnie Mitchell. But um, like if Benson or Jonathan Brooks do in fact, and I think they should get the draft capital that we're looking for. They have the profiles for me the profiles three down backs and the, then we're looking at 110, 111 there. Yeah. And yeah. That, that 17 and a half for AD Mitchell, I think, kind of still tells me that there's enough of the old school mentality of kind of what you were mentioning there before we ran into the second round of, you could call it BMI, I guess, but like just the AD Mitchell's 6'2, 205, and some of those other guys are, are not. And I feel like that 17 and a half is baked into like you got some of those guys who just that's what they want they they want the prototypical guy and, and obviously him running a fast 40 um you know and and having a nice combine clearly helped there's a lot of good stuff to like um yeah and then just a few more things like that you mentioned the the 40 time 434 early declare which is not make or break like we have a, a long list of guys especially once COVID hit where early declare that's sure. going to get a little more skewed i don't think it's going to be as critical when you're looking at things analytically but 21 year old breakout age not exactly great but not brutal by any means but the 1.78 max yards per team pass attempt that is a little concerning he's not really somebody that's going to do something after the catch one of the lowest across all wide receivers that were eligible for the draft this year, only 3.2 yards after catch per reception. But that kind of ties in and goes hand in hand with his a dot 16 yards uh, in the air per target. And like, I, I think just like looking at those two things, like there was a stretch where like Mike Evans in the NFL was never getting anything after the catch. He's like, two, two and a half, three yards, and the higher A dot. That kind of reminds me of this. I'm not saying Adonai Mitchell is Mike Evans. Um, you would give your left leg for any oh, of these yeah. guys to be uh, half of Mike Evans. But then one thing that was interesting, we talk about the 2025 quarterback class, and uh, Quinn Ewers, like the, he had some hype, and now it's like, oh, he's horrendous. He's terrible. When Adonai Mitchell was uh, targeted, his quarterback had the sixth highest quarterback rating whenever Adonai Mitchell was targeted. So he's making big plays. He's helping his his quarterback. Um, so I, I, I do think there's a lot of upside. And it's funny because he's the guy that is so divisive this year when you're looking at film and analytics. I know some people say, well, he takes plays off. But analytically, there are things that eh, – 
that you could poke sure. poke at. Yeah. But it's still the guy that I picked here at 201. Like, who am I turning into? Who, <laughs> who is this? <laughs> Yeah, I mean he's he's certainly interesting. I think properly rated there at two one for me. I, that's that's you know I, I like I said I like Lad in front of him. I just like what Lad does a little better uh, as far as game in game out. Obviously some injuries like Mitch pointed out at one point, but um, just crispy crispy route running, um, great hands, better effort um, consistently. Uh, but Ad Mitchell, you know. A.D. Mitchell could have such a wide range of outcomes. It's it's worth taking the shot. And I think uh, the guy ended this round, I think, will be an interesting conversation. Mitch, what are your thoughts here from from this 2-1 to 2-6 to crowd? Just real quick on McConkie. I think at the combine, Adunze was the best wide receiver there. McConkie was right next to him. Yeah. I mean, as far as how they looked, everything you saw on the field, they looked amazing. But I think... This part of the draft, I just go back to last year, right? Last year, I was dumb. At post-draft, I'd even have Tank Dell ranked. Like, Ooh. I didn't have him. Other people drafted him right. I didn't get a lot of him. But what I did get is I got a lot of Devin A. Chain, right? Mm. Because he just went to a good landing spot. But what I was able to do all throughout the season is I was able to trade for Tank Dell. You could trade for wide receivers pretty easily. Mm. Trying to get some like A-Chain when he's going hot, it's nearly impossible. Yeah. So if I really, this part of the draft, I'm hammering running backs because they just need a little boost. Then all of a sudden they'd like break the dynasty value chart because A-Chain was decent last year i mean the games he was in he was good but he was good for like four games but all of a sudden he's like running back five going into the offseason you're yeah. like how does this make any sense and that could be any of the guys that we're going to mention between brooks benson any of the other guys coming up later in the round you just need one to hit and their value goes up so high so quickly even if you don't like him you could get off of them super quick to compare to let's say you take the key on coleman here at 206. Yeah. yeah, you know, he could build into it. He could somehow get good. But what what's his dynasty value cap really compared to what these guys are? I just think it's so much smarter to take the stab on running backs in this part than just to hope a wide receiver can somehow turn into Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah, well, real, real quick, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the back half of this uh, round in just so mm -hmm. that we can open up the floodgate here we got roman wilson at 27 quorum at 28 jalen wright uh 29 braylon allen 210 marshawn lloyd 211 and, and jatavion sanders at 212 so you know you guys are all you know I, and i you know i i guess i pretty much agree with you um the key on coleman thing uh jb you were shaking your head you're just are you just out out there he's the only wide receiver in this group um this year coming out that he, his separation was horrible. You know, his his contested target rate in his final season here was above 30%. That's a huge red flag. And I, I cannot, I wouldn't come close to taking him at the 206. Yeah. And I don't care where he goes in the NFL draft. I don't care how early he goes he's going to be somebody that unless something just crazy happens in rookie drafts I, i'm not going to have any of them yeah i i have i have keon coleman uh xavier uh legit and uh braylon allen at the 22 23 24 spot in in basically this round if we're going to ranking them that's kind of you know at the end of this i think those guys weren't the upside shot of what could be, but I, I, I tend to agree with you Two six. I can say, yeah, yeah, I could, I could see taking a shot on Coleman, but I've, I very much like the point that you and Mitch have been making about these running backs. So let's dive into that a little bit. Blake Corum, right? Lloyd Allen, is there favorites for you guys? Is it all coming down to landing spots? What, what are, what are we thinking for the running backs in general? I'll be quick. After Benson and Brooks, I have a, a decent sized tier in Blake Core and Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, kind of hesitant to even have Bucky Irving here, but for the time being, still Bucky Irving, uh, my guy, Audrey Estime, mm. and then Braylon Allen. Uh, those are my three through seven. And 
the only thing that would really shake things up for me and brings like a, you know, I will Shipley and Jalen Wright in the tier below if they go a little bit earlier in the NFL draft that I'm expecting. Mitch, what about yeah, I'm all about dude, Blake Corum, I believe, is the best running back in this class. But you don't have to take him there because nobody else believes it, right? So right. I'm okay to be on that island. I'll take him at the 208. I do worry about how he's going to be on third downs. If he can actually pass block with, you know, his T-Rex arms. <laughs> but besides that, Jalen Wright, what happens if he goes to Dallas? We're going to love him, right? Mm. Marshawn Lloyd, like if you watch... All of these backs on film, Marshawn Lloyd is my favorite guy to watch. Like, he's quick, he's fun, he bowls people over, he's awesome. And then Braylon Allen, it's, could he just run a 40? Just once. Just, if it's 4-7, let it be 4-7. If it's, just give me an idea, because if he's a 4-5-5 guy, all of a sudden he goes to a good spot, I'm like, you know what? It's not that bad, but right now in my mind, he's like, slower than John is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, dude, no, that that is not possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what do you guys think in terms of like how many running backs go day two? Do you have a ballpark? Like I'm at eight. D- and day two, you eight running backs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, between second and third rounds. I'd say three or four. Three I'm or four, to five to six. Yeah. So, we, man, we're getting. You guys add your picks up, and maybe you'll get to. Me. I think so you're going to get think- a lot of fourth, fourth, and fifth round running backs, um, and I, I think there'll be a running back or two that maybe shock us in there, and we're closer to Mitch's number. I think eight's it. What's the over under? Can we get can we get a legitimate <laughs> over under here? Yeah. So right now, so Brooks is. I'm sure we all agree. Brooks, Benson, Corum, maybe Wright would kind of be the one, right? And then. I just love Marshawn Lloyd, so I think someone's yeah, going to Yeah, I, I, have, you, I have Lloyd, Wright, and Corum all kind of snug together in the middle of mm-hmm. this round. Right, right. With, with I, I like Corum. I agree with you. I, you know, I would I would lean air towards Benson and Brooks a little bit, but Corum's just older. But if he's going to be, that's fine. Like, I'm okay with that because everyone's so scared of running backs anyway. We're going to get three years out of him. Great. I think he's going to go plug and play immediately. He's, he's yeah. ready to roll. Like, He's a good player. I was looking for something I could throw a flag at, and this is in support of you, actually, Casey. Uh, and I, I very quickly mentioned it earlier. Like, I, I don't think, like, it's going to be as critical moving forward. Like, oh, this running back's 23. They're not an early declare. With, with the NIL money, like, th- these kids, like, I, I think they're going to enjoy staying in college, especially running backs. And, like, you look at the guys that, I mentioned eight. I, I think a Blake Corum. I think Marshawn Lloyd could be two of those guys that go day two. They're 23 years old. Um, you know, and I, I don't think it's really as concerning just because they do have other aspects of their profiles that I, I think are favorable. I, I know Blake Corum, there's a lot of talk about uh, his yards after contact per attempt not being great here in his final season. Uh, and I, Mitch, you're you're certainly higher on quorum than I am. But still, we're talking about middle of the second round, back into the second. There, at this point in time, there's no harm in in taking that shot. Right. Yeah, and we, and we had you know this this RB class could be a little better, but they all went back. Um, for you know to, to further your point, I think you know you want to play and um, you know can get some money. Uh, why not? And and see maybe you do up that stock even more um but I, you know it, it, it was interesting i was i was i liked a couple of guys that went back which was a bummer i think a lot of people are down on this running back class but at this point i think they're they're pro- like where you can get them i'm in very much in on you know five or six of these guys and will you mentioned will shipley and i like estime um i like both of those guys quite a bit um so um and bucky irving will we we shall see i liked him a lot i didn't doesn't seem like he's as slow as you know the the testing made him out to be. It was so, the testing was so gross. How about how about a, like the, the vertical too? Like that was anyway. How about these these tight ends here? Um, J T. Sanders. I I I really like him, but he's probably got to be at the back end of the second round for me and tight end premium. Um, just 
the testing wasn't as good as you would want it to be. I, I, you know, in watching Texas play football, he was their go-to guy in a lot of big spots. Um, and I really like what he can do. Now, I feel like he has to land in, in a correct spot. for He's not a tight end that you, you know, can just line up out there and, and run traditional. He's more of a receiver type player, but I, we're, we're moving in that direction anyway. So does not as worrisome as maybe it was, but really has to land in the right spot. Thoughts on, you know, is, is, is he somebody that you guys are interested at all in the second round? And then Roman Wilson probably was too early in the second round for me anyway. Mitch. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead. Uh, I'm out on Sanders. Like I like, I like his profile and everything, but Luckily enough, last year was such a great tight end class. I hammered the tight ends in the yeah. second and third rounds to where now very few of my teams, I need to even worry about that position. But if I do, I like other guys in the third round that are wide receivers and running backs more than I like Sanders. Like, honestly, Theo Johnson went like in the middle fourth, right? Mm -hmm. I like him just as much as Sanders. Mm. I know the NFL probably likes him probably around less, but as far as like drafting for dynasty, Dale Johnson's fine for me. If I could get yeah. him a two round discount off Sanders, I'm all about that. Yeah. As the 23 season progressed, I, I liked Jatavion Sanders uh, a good amount, uh, you know, threw a few tweets out there about the kid, make him feel good. <laughs> um, but like the, the testing and the, like, like he's fine. Like, I just think the upside is going to be a concern. So even in a uh, two PPR, certainly 1.5 PPR, I would want to take a shot on several other guys. Mm -hmm. The only thing that maybe could be a saving grace for Jatavian Sanders, like he, he's athletic enough. We kind of talked about this on dynasty theory last week, like the uh, relative athletic score, just over eight, certainly not elite, but athletic enough I'm concerned that he's another one of those guys that slips in the NFL draft. Like I, I just, again, yeah. I just have this weird feeling. I, I thought he was going to be right around like early second yeah. top 40. Yeah. And now it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. He seems, he seems kind of like with the NFL, like feels like the fantasy people are maybe fading him a little like I don't know, the, the actual NFL people. I haven't seen too much fade per se on him like he feels like Keon Coleman a little bit like we're yeah well, it feels like we're kind of out on him but like the NFL I still think is going to be pretty in on him with it's not going to be first round like it was months ago for Keon Coleman but I don't think he's getting out of the second round um so you know a little interesting there so anybody have anything else I'm going to just open this up for you know talking about the rest of these guys good uh, in the second round I, I wouldn't have taken Marshawn Lloyd yet. It I, two eleven. I get it. it it's fine. Mm, you're uh, a hater, huh? Because he didn't watch the tape. Hate. He a looked at the sheets it. and didn't look at the tape. Mm. That's the reason. Mm. Mm. Or w wait, who did I just say? Marshawn, Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd. Oh no 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 no! I like Marshawn Lloyd there. <laughs> Jalen Wright. I, I uh, Jalen Wright. I, listen, I'm going crazy over here. Uh, I'm losing my freaking mind. No, Jalen Wright was the one that was a little bit earlier than my for my liking at 209. I don't Corum, like Braylon Allen, Roman Wilson at 207 a little early for me. Keon Coleman at 206. I wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot stick. Uh yeah, so that's why I'm on the back half of the second. All right. He's okay, so you're a hater on Jalen Wright then. Okay. Got yes. it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let, I was wrong the first time, but now I'm right. <laughs> All right. Into this third round we got Estime, Pearsall, Corley, Legette, McMillan, Rattler, Polk, Irving, Baker, Cowing, Rice, Davis. And then the fourth round is Shipley, Schrader, uh, Garando, Lobb, Malik Washington, Sinnott, Tez Walker, Frank Gore, Theo Johnson, uh, Jaheim, Jaheim Bell, Luke McCaffrey, and uh, Burton to round this thing out. So... Uh, really just want to kind of open this up. We don't have to go pick by pick, round by round. Who who, who are some of these guys? Obviously, you picked Estime, uh, JB. Um, Mitch, you picked Bucky and Frank Gore. You picked Shipley and Estime. I picked McMillan and Washington. Um, JB, I'll give the floor to you on some of these guys that you like. Uh, Mitch, I don't know if we were on camera or off camera at this point. You know, this this third round to three six to three eight is a lot of fun, at least yep. right now. 
Anyway, so JB, take it away. Uh, I'm going to give you a little rapid fire here, boys. Get ready. Get, get ready. <laughs> uh, I took Audric Estime at 301. 5'11", 222, dude's a tank, 20 years old, three years in Notre Dame, over six yards per carry, 4.27 yards after contact per attempt, fourth best of 2024 rookie running backs with at least 100 carries in 2023, just under three yards per team rush attempt. He he can withstand the workload, almost 50% max rushing market share. He's efficient. He gives you enough in the receiving game, 6% receiving college dominator uh which is around like 50th percentile he's a little slow four six one forty a little slow um but again I, I i think he is gonna drop and he's gonna be a very attainable price because that that 40 time is gonna rub a lot of people the wrong way i will ship lee at 401 85 receptions in three years at clemson mm. he is a weapon he is efficient not a huge workload on the ground but again he did enough that's i i I, I got him at 401. No risk upside there. I really like Ricky Parasol at 302. I like Malachi Corley at 303. Uh, actually, Mitch taking Bucky at 308. I like that a lot. And Ray Davis, 312. Jacob Cowing, 310. There are two guys that were not drafted that I just wanted to kind of spotlight real quick. Tyron Vidal? Tracy. Who? Vidal. Oh, come on, come on. I, yeah. I, I was like, I've never heard of him before. I thought no, he was no, no, no. <laughs> no, I was like, uh, yeah, I, I do like. All him right. He wasn't one of them. All right. Whatever. Proceed. No, 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 no. But I do like him. Yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Hold on. I had him down here for something that I wanted to highlight. A lot of highlighting for me. here. Yeah. Uh, where was come on? Yeah. Uh, four, four, six, 40. And there, there's two guys that really stand out from this class with an elite rush attempt market share perspective. It's Ray Davis and Kamani Vidal. So so there's your there I, I like that shout. Uh, but Tyrone Tracy. Yeah, yes, dude's like 24 like years it. old. There you go. He has six seasons for Iowa, know. two at Purdue. He's looking for his Van Wilder degree over mm -hmm. here. But he's got a 44840. One of the highest receiving college dominators in this class, just over 11%, six and a half yards per carry. Not necessarily known for having the high rushing market share or the rushing touchdown upside, but he's extremely efficient. Size is fine, 5'11, 209. Um, out of Purdue. the 2024 rookie running backs, was that? I thought you were saying out of, and I said Purdue. I thought you were saying where he was from. I already covered the six seasons for at <laughs> Iowa, two at Purdue. Let me get through my notes Great here, receiver. Damn it. This is the most he, rapid fire I've ever seen. Uh, he was rapid. number one in yards after contact per attempt of all the running backs coming out this year with at least 100 carries. And then Jamari Thrash, he was not taken mm, in the first great, four rounds great. here. But he's a name I wanted to throw out Got there. to. All right, Don't that's my rapid the fire. liberal media tell you that's what you need to remember when we're talking about these guys just don't let them don't let them tell you how to think and feel that's all right you know so mitch how about how about your thoughts here I, so um you know no no javon baker love for the bauer club over there no polk or mcmillan love there no spencer rattler love what where are you at here uh mitch who are your guys kind of in this third fourth round i really like polk like i'm I think he's actually going to go a lot higher than the NFL draft and that everyone's going to be like, oh, you can't really get him in the third round of mock drafts. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to go a lot higher than people expect. But I, I know everyone reads this, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Dane Brugler's The Beast is amazing, and it's not just for where he ranks them. You get to learn things about guys, right? Like, mm -hmm. I was kind of out on Malachi Corley. I mean, I was like a Western Kentucky guy, right? Like, uh -huh. They never really work out. But then you find out that his favorite plays in the playbook are wide receiver screens when he's not getting the ball and he gets to go pe blow people up. If you get that in a third-round wide receiver, even a third-round wide receiver in the NFL draft, coaches are going to get him on the field faster yeah. than they will other guys. And knowing that and just knowing he's bigger, he's physically – he could start right away in the NFL. So I really, really like Corley, love Pearsall, um, the one guy that like I've fallen in love with. Well, let me. Okay, I've started to like more this week, and it's I didn't know anything about him to be honest with you until people started talking about him. So I looked him up on the Beast and started watching some tape. Jermaine Burton's like really good. He's yeah. like a really good wide receiver. Dude's insane. Like he's not 
all there, yeah. but it, he's an amazing wide receiver. And I just, maybe he drops, but honestly, if I have a pick between 308 and 312, and most of the guys we yeah. kind of like are already picked, right? Because they went higher in the NFL draft. Burton's the guy I'm going to take a shot at. Even if he goes in the seventh round of the NFL draft, the guy has so much talent that if he could just go to a situation to where they just get him on the right track, even for two or three years, all of a sudden you're going to triple, quadruple that value, and you're going to love that pick at that point. Yeah, the off the field stuff is is what has been you know the the big red flag for him um, between the years kind of stuff. But there's there's a lot to like. I think he will end up going a little higher, but that might push him down a little bit. I, I think you'll see him before the seventh round, just because you were at a point in the NFL where we're paying wide receiver twos so much damn money that True. you know you got to be you got to be stabbing on wide receivers. And and to the Malachi Corley point, I think Jalen Polk fits that that narrative of being a good blocker as well out there for you. Um, so both of those guys that you really like are are really plus in that category. Uh, JB, did you have something else? Looks like you were dying to get back in there. What do you? No, 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 no. I'm I'm just here to enjoy the the conversation. So no, no love for my. I'm a big Jalen McMillan guy. I got him pretty pretty high. Um, I I I think he does every a lot of things really really well. Um, just an a- excellent receiver, really, really good slot player here. I think he's, I feel like you're either a Polk or a McMillan guy throughout this mm-hmm. process here. Um, and, uh, I think both of them are probably going to end up second, third round picks. Um, and, and the, the battle will, will rage on no, no Baker love for either one of you guys. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah. Okay. I, I like I, it. And I say, I, I say it like this because like, he's gotten a lot of hype on that. The old x website mm-hmm. you know he, he that's like oh everybody's big sleeper well i mean is he a sleeper if everybody and their fucking mother is talking about him yeah like i mean, maybe my mom hasn't talked about him but i know a lot of people are john um, is he gonna be a pittsburgh steeler or what <laughs> <laughs> um but no, like if, um, if you have <laughs> Yeah, um, if you have three tenor on, like like Mitch said, I have, I have Brennan Rice, Javon Baker, Jacob Cowing, Jalen McMillan, Malik Washington, Jamari Thrash. Yeah, all I like that thrash together drop. there. Like Cowing like, a lot. Like, yeah, I have them all kind of sitting right there, but it's going to be tough for these wide receivers to go day two whenever every pick's going to be a running back on day two. Yeah, Feel, feels like, like Baker. Baker, if he would have came out and, and performed a little better at the combine, felt like he was red hot going into that and then kind of just has tapered off. Like Tez was the same way or even earlier in the cycle, pretty hot. And then any because I don't have a feeling one way or another on Tez. You guys, could you sell me being in or out on on him? Either one of you? I, I do the the rookie tiers and the cross positional tier updates constantly. He was one from when I first started getting rookies in the sheets, like January time frame, he's up here. Then I do the updates and he drops a little bit. And I do the updates That's what it and he seems drops like. a little And I'm like, I, I really had this dude too high to begin with. I So, yeah, he's... I, I think I have him in that tier above what I mentioned just, just a bit ago, but we're still talking like middle of the third round. Like yeah. it is... So I, I I don't know unless something crazy happens in the NFL draft, but we're we're gonna get a few surprises here. Yeah, in a week's time. Yeah, yeah. You know we're we're gonna get that Clyde Edwards layer in the back end of the first. We're like something crazy. We're gonna see some draft some day trades. trades. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I like know, last year at this time, Jameer Gibbs was a second round pick. Lions took him. What was it like one eleven or something like that? This stuff happens all the time. Like we think we know, right. we think we have a peg down. And we're like, yeah, that didn't really happen. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, then, real- and then there's there's picks just like Gibbs that like even within NFL circles and, and the pundits, they're all like, didn't see that coming. Yep. Like, yep. so not just fantasy folks, people that are in the know, oh, presumably, yeah. yeah, are absolutely shocked as well. Yeah. How about Rattler? I, I feel like middle of the third, kind of early third. I feel like you got to take a shot on him. No, uh, no, no, I'm actually o- completely OK with that price point. Uh, you know, he could fit the feels like he's going to be a third round pick in the actual draft. I, right. I was just going to say third round pick. He fits like that. I'm not saying the type of player, but like a Desmond Ritter, Sam Howell, maybe he gets a shot. And once he gets a shot, 
everybody's dying for young quarterbacks in fantasy in, in super flex leagues. Like we saw Sam Howell and Desmond Ritter go for late first mm-hmm. at, at a, some point in time. So yeah, I, I don't mind the shot there in uh, Rattler. Yeah, I think like if he could somehow, if I could, what I really like to do in the third and fourth rounds, I like to be really overweight because I have probably like 40 or 50 dynasty leagues, but I was doing this when I was like having 10 leagues to start off with, right? I like to be really heavy on some players and hope they hit. I don't like just throwing a whole bunch out there and maybe having, hey, I have one of these players on one of these teams. That's yeah. great. It's really not, you know, I want to be really overweight on players that I like. So if I could be really overweight on like Corley in the third, and somehow get Rattler in the fourth or get, you know, maybe Theo Johnson in the fourth in a tight end premium league. Just end up having 40, 50% roster ship of those guys. I would much prefer that even if I miss because it's third rounds. We miss all the time. John sure. and I have been going over the 21, 22, and this week we'll go over the 23 rookie drafts and redrafting them, right? Our hit rate is so bad going starting from like the second round moving on. Mm-hmm. So if you could just be right on one of those guys one year, it makes such a difference for your dynasty teams. Just hit on one. Like if you hit on Amara St. Brown, all of your teams are better, right? Oh, and yeah. if you missed and you took someone else, it doesn't matter because everybody else missed too. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, for me, I, I like Malik Washington a whole lot. I'll be interested to see where he goes. Um, and then for the tight ends, Sinnott, I, I think is right up there. Uh, he's, he's interesting. You know, he, he can kind of, he can do a lot for you. And if, if, if the right, if that Shanahan tree mold kind of guy gets a hold of somebody like him, who can kind of be the fullback, who can be your tight end, who can do so many different things. Um, very athletic, a whole lot of fun to watch the tape on. Um, and I, I think he's going to end up getting better draft capital. And yeah, I think he's going to be a guy who you're not going to be getting in the fourth at the, in the fourth round of, cause I, I was really struggling at four or five because I want to take him there. And then I was like, I'm taking Malik Washington. I'll see if anybody takes Sinnott. Um, But I think he's going to end up early thirds because I think the draft capital is going to be really good on him. Theo Johnson's really I, interesting. And Jaheim I Bell I like say, as well. Go ahead. On, on one of these tight ends, they're going to get – like I could see one of the tight ends going third-run NFL draft – but it almost feels like like we could see like some type of Dalton Keene situation mm. where you get an athlete, like because you mentioned like a fullback type build. You get one of these guys that comes in and maybe the expectation is they do a little bit more uh, in terms of like a, a versatile role compared to like a traditional tight end. So, right. Well, that's what I, we I always assume. We- I and mean, that's what we always want, but it almost never happens. That's why it's like yeah. I don't like sh- like the Shannon, like you saw it with. With you've seen it with Shanahan, you saw it with Slowick a little bit last year with Beck or whoever they had back there uh, in Houston. They were using that tight end, moving them or, or using the fullback as a as a you know kind of traditional fullback. They were throwing it to him though. They were they were sitting him out. They were throwing him to him in the end zone. If you can get somebody with that idea of how to use you know that's really what a lot of this kind of you know. Debo Samuel is, is Debo Samuel anywhere else? Probably not. You know what I mean? So like a lot, like some of these things and ideas need to really get into the right situation and the right mind to use kind of them to what we hope they're going to, you know, how many years do we have to go of being, you know, this guy's going to catch more balls because he was a receiver in college. You know, we're going to put him in the slot more as the running back. And they fucking never do like, yep. So I don't know. It's, yeah. Every running back's going to work out of the slot. Right. Every tight end's going to yeah. be used. Gibson and Pollard, they were going to be interchangeable at wide receiver. And, you know, uh, you know, maybe if somebody like the Shanahan gets a hold of them, you could do something like that. Uh, but you don't ever see it. You know, it's, it's something that you right. catch in July that they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to use him in the slot. He's going to be all over the place twice in the season. You see him there, mm-hmm. you know. So, all right. Any any other comments? Any Anything that you guys want to touch on before we close up shop here? Trying to think. I think we hit about everybody that I like. I okay, think we did. I, I'm still thinking about Mitch saying he likes to be overweight on a player, and I'm sitting here thinking I don't like to be overweight, but here I am anyway. <laughs> well, you could have been riding the exercise. That was bike. a joke I thought of ten minutes ago. You could have been riding how- that exercise bike that you had to move out of frame before we started this whole time, and you could have been. Just, you can't have an exercise bike <laughs> sitting here and then be like, "Look at that, dude! I know he doesn't <laughs> use that." <laughs> Hey, you got three kids, man, you know, or you got one on the what? Th- the third one on yeah, the way. Just, so. just trying to persevere one day at a time. <laughs> this guy's knee deep in it. 
Uh, all right, tell tell us uh, when, where, and what, and how we can find the Dynasty Theory and you guys individually uh, while we get out of here. Oh, John's fro. So I'll I'll let him do the big one. I'm at Dino MC on X, Twitter, whatever. I'm I just troll on there. I just say like things to make fun of the Dynasty community as much as possible. But I like it. Pretty much find me in the Discord that John, John's going to talk about here in a second. JB. So I'm unfrozen. I don't know where the frick is. It, like I was, I was great the on the show on Sunday, Mitch. Like the, my internet was fine. You were great, yeah. Yeah, I was. You it was start great. messing. You start moving happened. workout bikes around, and I know, I know. Anyway, <laughs> find me on Twitter at the Bauer Club. We're uh, uh, on Dynasty Theory at Dynasty Dynasty Theory FF on Twitter. We got the Dynasty Theory Discord. We got the Patreon. We, with, with Dynasty Tears, we do an extra episode every week of the Pivot Point. Pivot! We're doing a live draft show. Thursday, Friday night, Mitch and I are going to be streaming for probably combined like 11 hours. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of great conversations, analysis. Um, but yeah, sponsored that, that's by Depends. Be live on the Dynasty Theory YouTube. What was that? I said sponsored by Depends. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> yep. Just going to be sitting there pissing and shitting ourselves. <laughs> Home Depot buckets. <laughs> yeah. Just buckets. And anyway, I. Uh, Always have an absolute blast with you, Case. Yeah, we'll pre always, always appreciate you guys joining us. Be sure to tune in, like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. You can find us on on the uh, Patreons, FF Dynasty. We got Discord. We got, we're doing mock drafts. We're doing all sorts of stuff over there. Be sure to go check that out if you haven't already. There's also a free Discord that you can hop on over there um, and, and get some questions answered with the community, and, and we hop in and out of there as well. Uh, so go check that out. JB, Mitch, always, always a blast. Got to, uh, got to, come back after the draft and and re uh reevaluate everything that we said and what was wrong and, and what was right and and how how wrong you are on jalen Wright, you son of a bitch <laughs> and but uh yeah I, th I think uh i think we'll we'll be seeing you guys again real soon after the draft Is, can i can i lock that in can love it verbal yep. commitments we we can get a, a a soft commitment on that a soft commitment <laughs> All right, we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.